Hi everybody and welcome to the Professional Forex Trading Masterclass video series with me Anton Creel and welcome to the Institute's offices here in sunny Singapore. Uh, it's been a couple of years since we launched the Professional Trading Masterclass video series uh, to great success. Uh, a lot of people have completed the course, uh, been through the examination and ended up becoming Institute traders and a lot of people are actually in the Institute are, are very active in the Forex market as well. So we've had uh, a lot of requests uh, over the last couple of years for us to actually launch a Forex course and people would be right in asking us to do that because many of the systematic processes that are used uh, and have been learned in the professional trading masterclass video series can actually be applied specifically to the Forex markets. So that's what we're actually going to do here. We're going to take uh, professional trader systematic processes that were used by the vast majority of professional traders at hedge funds and investment banks and apply those systematic processes specifically to the Forex market. Now, there's a lot of noise, a lot of misinformation in the Forex markets and probably in the Forex markets more so than any other asset class or any other market out there. And there's specific reasons why this is the case. It's because the Forex market is very heavily traded and a lot of people with conflict of interest go out there and either push people in a direction uh, to do the wrong thing uh, or they give a lot of misinformation in order for them to get paid. Um, we're going to completely do the opposite. And the reason why we're doing that is because we are professional traders and we have no agenda behind except to teach you how to do this properly. So as we go through the course, you're going to see uh, a lot of things that might even be new to you, uh, which is a great thing because you're either new to Forex and you've never seen anything in the Forex market before, and this is a great place to start, or you've been around the Forex market uh, a long time as a retail trader and maybe you've had limited success or even lost money, failed to, failed to make or just lost a lot of money. Um, you're not alone. There's, uh, there's a lot of people in the Forex market, in the retail Forex market that lose money. In fact, the vast majority do lose money. Um, there's some very specific reasons why. We'll be looking at those inside the course, uh, but it's nothing to feel bad about because there's a lot of misinformation and conflict of interest in the retail Forex trading market and it's very difficult to actually avoid it. Well, just by being here now, you've already started to avoid it. I can assure you that we're going to be taking the professional trader approach and we're going to be helping you to become consistently profitable. Before we actually go into building out these uh, large and sometimes complex systematic processes, what we're actually going to do is lay a foundation for you. And what you're hoping to achieve in the first part of this video series is to actually get yourself a really solid understanding and build a foundation in understanding the underpinnings of the Forex market. The first thing we're actually going to focus on uh, is the definitions of currencies. What you're going to find is, is that there's some widespread kind of classically accepted definitions of Forex. And these definitions uh, tend to focus on the size of the economies of the currencies that people look at. In video one, we're going to look at these classically accepted definitions and we're actually going to compare them to what real professional traders do. So what you might find is, for example, when you go into the Forex market as a retail trader, is that everybody defines or groups currencies in certain ways. It's actually completely wrong. Uh, the way professional traders do it is they group currencies uh, in terms of opportunity, and opportunity comes from volatility. So without further ado, let's get started 
let's go over to video number one. We'll look at the definitions of currencies and start to build out this foundation. Once we've built this foundation, then you'll have a proper understanding of all the basics of the Forex market. Therefore, you'll be able to move on to the more complex systematic processes. So I'll see you on the computer screen and I'll also see you at the end of this video for a recap. Okay, so welcome to the computer screen. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the overall structure of the PFTM course itself. Uh, this is just to give you an idea of where we're beginning and where we're going with this. Um, so let's maximize the presentation onto the screen. And really the PFTM, uh, what you're going to find as we go through this is the video series is really a major lesson in macroeconomics and international trade, as much as it is a lesson in trading and portfolio management. And this is really due to the professional trader systematic processes that we're going to go through in order to obtain currency positions. And what we're going to find is that actually the professional approach is very much in the majority driven by fundamentals. So the split really is roughly speaking about 80% fundamental and 20% technical. And those fundamental situations that we're going to be looking at really are what we call drivers. So fundamental drivers in macroeconomics and international trade that generate for us high quality trading ideas. And then we're using technicals in the minority to overlay our fundamental analysis. And it's very much the case that if you walk onto an investment bank trading floor or walk into a hedge fund, that you'll find roughly that this split exists, that 80% of everything professional traders do in the currency markets is driven by macroeconomic fundamentals. And really anybody that tells you that this is not the case is lying and probably has a conflict of interest with your own objectives, which is to really learn how to use your own money to make consistent money over your lifetime from the currency markets. Fundamentals, macro fundamentals, drive idea generation in currency trading as much as any other asset class for professional traders, if not more so. Now, the process that we're gonna go through, the systematic process, really uh, is anchored to idea generation. That's driven by all things macro, fundamental, as we've already pointed out. Um, but it's then followed by what we call a gatekeeping process, which consists of generating high quality watch lists, i.e. high quality trade ideas that generate high quality watch lists, and then overlaid with technical and price action indicators. The gatekeeping process is essentially what we use for timing and stopping us doing stupid things with our own capital. So idea generation in the majority fundamentally driven, then followed by a process by which we stop ourselves doing silly things with our own capital. And the gatekeeping process consisting of watch list, technical and price action overlays the gatekeeping process is generally speaking a timing mechanism. So fundamentals followed by timing. Then we have professional trader risk management and self-awareness statistics. Now, if you've ever heard of the trading strategy global macro or heard of, for example, global macro hedge fund managers, this is what the course is going to teach you. 
it's going to teach you exactly this approach and exactly how to implement the approach in your retail trading accounts. Whenever you walk onto an investment bank uh, trading floor or a hedge fund floor, the proprietary traders at investment banks and the hedge fund managers, if their remit is global macro, then this is exactly the approach that they take. So overall, the course is 80% fundamentally driven, 20% technical, and we go through several steps in order to take real positions with real money, that being macro, fundamentally driven idea generation, a gatekeeping process, a risk management process, and self-awareness. So let's start the whole process and let's lay out the real objective here. The real objective here is to provide retail Forex traders, so you guys, with a systematic approach to predicting future currency moves in the same way that professional traders and hedge fund managers do so, so you can implement exactly the same approach and make consistent money from it over your lifetime. Now, the systematic approach starts with idea generation, but there is actually a huge shortfall in understanding and knowledge in the retail trader environment uh, versus the professional trading environment uh, in currency markets themselves. And what we have to do first is actually plug that gap. We need to basically understand the idiosyncrasies of the currency market so we have a fundamental understanding and foundation of what currency markets are all about. And no two asset classes are exactly the same. Currency markets have different idiosyncrasies and details to them that differ from stock markets, commodity markets and bond markets that we just have to learn. We have to learn these things so we have the foundation in order to build a real systematic process on top of that. Once we understand all of this stuff, we can, we can really then move on to building a systematic process. Otherwise, if we don't have this foundation, we could find ourselves struggling with these idiosyncrasies uh, when we build out a systematic process later on. So what we have to do is get all of this out of the way and make sure that everyone going through the video series as retail traders get this foundation and understanding of the idiosyncrasies of Forex markets. So what we have to do is get a foundation in the following areas. In video one, uh, we're going to look at the first Forex market foundation area, and this is the opportunity set. What is the opportunity set? Well, all traders, whether it's in the currency markets, stock markets, commodity or bond markets, all traders are really slaves to volatility. And what we have to do is define what our opportunities can and can't be. So we're going to go into the currency markets and look at uh, most of the uh, major and minor currency pairs uh, across the world and actually define how we look at the opportunities properly. The second thing we're going to do in video number two is look at Forex market regimes. There's different regimes across different currencies and we have to actually define these and really understand them. This actually helps us and ties in very usefully with defining our opportunity set. So we have to understand the differences between Forex market regimes. The third thing we have to look at is Forex market infrastructure. In terms of infrastructure, what we have to understand is our parameters that we're dealing with within the Forex market itself. So who are the players in the Forex market? How do we actually deal in the Forex market? What is fundamentally driven? What is speculative? We have to understand the parameters that we're dealing with and the limitations of those parameters. And if we learn this stuff, we can learn, therefore, 
not to do silly things and then operate within these parameters successfully and make consistent money over our lifetime. In video number four, we're going to move on to uh, some basic computational methods. So there's a lot of uh, arithmetic generally in trading, but in the currency markets, there's specific arithmetic that we have to get a handle on. We have to understand how to do those things. Uh, so they just come to us as second nature. So when we start building out systematic processes, we can look at something and work it out very, very quickly and understand what's happening behind the numbers. So we're going to look at some basic computational methods that once we understand should be in your psyche for forever and you should be able to react very quickly uh, to very simple straight linear mathematics and work things out very quickly uh, for the rest of your life. So then we move on to video five and six, which is then moving on to more advanced computational methods. And Christopher Quill, who's the Institute's statistics analyst, uh, is going to take you through some pretty advanced computational methods and train you on Excel uh, in terms of looking and understanding volatility. So we'll be looking at and understanding how to look and get uh, potential trade ideas from volatility. So we'll be looking at opportunity and risk by assessing volatility in the Forex market. And it's very important to understand that overall, what we're trying to do here as traders is always seek out volatile opportunities. And obviously opportunities bring with them some sort of risk. And as traders, we need to embrace risk because you can't have opportunity without risk. And as a professional trader, what you need to be doing is working out the most systematic and basic processes to understand how to capture that volatility. So Chris Quill is going to take you through all of that. And things do get pretty advanced, but once you're up to speed and you understand that stuff, it's going to be great for you because over the rest of your life, you'll be able to download data and go through these processes and be able to very, very quickly understand whether there's opportunities or risk or both potentially uh, and be able to assess whether there's, there's the ability to have positions that are going to pay you. So let's kick it all off with video number one. And once we go through the first six videos, uh, then we can actually move on because we will have got this foundation. Then we can actually move on to building out systematic processes, which we start on idea generation, then moving on to gatekeeping, then moving on to risk management and self-awareness statistics. So the first thing we do is build this foundation. Once your foundation is strong, then we'll move on to the systematic process. So let's start with video number one, the opportunity set. Okay, so uh, let's get started with building out uh, our understanding of the underpinnings of the Forex market. And let's try to establish a really solid foundation and understanding of the currency markets. So the first thing we're gonna have a look at here is we're gonna try to understand uh, what the Forex markets are all about in their basics. And what you're gonna find is that there's a lot of uh, what we call noise in the Forex market, more so than probably any other asset class. What, what do we mean by the noise? Uh, well, what we mean is basically the participants. So companies and people within the Forex market that have inherent conflicts of interest to your own objective, which is to make money 
using your own money. And these participants that perpetuate the noise, really, they divert your attention away from your objective in order to get themselves paid. And what you're going to find is a lot of brokers and educators in the Forex market, they're no different in the Forex market than any other asset class. In fact, they're probably even worse than in other asset classes. And once you start really understanding uh, what their objectives are and how they're counterintuitive to your own objectives, um, you're going to begin to understand what the true underpinnings of the retail trader Forex market actually are. And you'll be able to cut through all of this noise and the BS perpetuated by these players with their inherent conflicts of interest. What do we mean by the conflict of interest? Well, what we mean is actually the people and companies that get paid on a volume basis. So they get paid a commission based on the amount of volume that trades in a particular market. So once you understand how this conflict of interest is against all of your own objectives, you're going to understand and know the difference between what is probably true and what is false in the markets. And that's going to really help you to avoid all of the retail Forex trading mistakes. And it's going to stop you losing money. So becoming part of what we call the 1990 in the Forex markets, which is 90% of retail Forex traders lose 90% of their money within 90 days. And it's going to protect your downside. And the 1990 phenomenon is something that we talk about a lot in the Institute. The vast majority of retail Forex traders actually lose most or all of their money in a very short space of time. And it's absolutely 100% true. You know, we have a lot of statistics in the Institute that we look at, and we've seen the 280,000 trading accounts in the Forex market, uh, in the retail Forex market, across all the retail brokerage platforms. And 90% of these accounts, plus over 90%, are actually down. They lose pretty much all of their money uh, in a very short space of time. And once you start understanding the reasons why, this is going to help you protect your downside. One of the reasons is that there's a lot of noise. And as professional traders, what we try to do all the time is to seek out in any market, we seek out volatility. And once we start actually looking at how the Forex market is organized, so once we start looking at how we organize the world's currency markets versus how the participants with conflict of interest actually organize the world's currency markets. We start to see that these, these, this organization and the definitions of currencies are actually different to our own. <clears throat> and the first thing we look at, for example, is how uh, brokers and investment banks actually uh, define currencies. Because what we want to do is start organizing in a professional trader way and really focus on volatility. And when we, when we look at the way the popular media, so this is the outlet for all the noise. So we're talking about television, newspapers, and online media. When we look at the way the outlet, the media, uh, organize and uh, structure the definitions of currencies, we realize that they're very different to a volatility analysis. So you might think here, for example, why are we looking at uh, investment bank definitions? Well, investment banks are, are really uh, institutional brokers. They do business with hedge funds and pension funds mainly on the secondary market side. And uh, in the Forex markets, their clients, the hedge funds and the pension funds, trade currencies via the investment bank and pay a spread or commission. They pay the spread 
on all of the uh, currency pairs that they trade. And investment banks are simply just the institutional side of retail brokers. So essentially, they're just institutional brokers. They're, they're market makers. They also do have proprietary trading operations. And what's actually quite surprising is that the proprietary trading operations in investment banks would take the same approach that we take, which is different to the approach that the market making side of the investment bank would take uh, in defining currencies. And the way currencies are defined at investment banks and retail brokers, um, the way these uh, the way these guys uh, define currencies is very much counterintuitive to a professional trader objective, which is to make money using our own money. So, what you're going to find with investment banks, retail brokers, and media is that currencies will be grouped very much dependent on the size of the currency. What do we mean by the size of the currency? The amount of volume that trades per day, the most popular currencies. So the first definition you're going to see uh, is the G10, the group of 10 currencies. And what we've got here is the classic definition of G10, which is the US dollar, euro, Japanese yen, British pound, Swiss franc, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, Swedish krona, and Norwegian krona. And you're going to notice here that we've got the letter C next to four of our currencies. So the letter C, for example, is next to Australian dollar. And the letter C actually stands for commodities. The reason why we've marked these up uh, with a letter C next to them is because our objective is to figure out what has the most potential volatility, what has the least potential volatility, and we want to know what these commodity, these uh, currency values actually depend on. So what we've done is we've marked here uh, the currencies within the G10. We've marked them with a C because they're, the value of their currency is dependent or very heavily dependent on the price of international commodities. So just one or two particular commodities. And these differ, for example, from the US dollar, euro, yen, pound, Swiss franc, Swedish krona. They differ slightly because the other currencies don't depend solely on one or two commodities. So the prices of their currencies don't depend heavily on the price of one or two of their exports. And the bigger currencies, the US dollar, euro, Japanese yen, pound, Swiss franc, Swedish krona, these currencies that don't depend on the one or two commodities, those currencies are more diverse in their exports. And when you think about this, if a currency value is heavily dependent on one or two commodities relative to another that is very diverse in its exports, it's pretty obvious that it's more likely that the commodity currency is going to be potentially more volatile because it depends on just one or two factors rather than a multitude of factors. So we mark these up with a C to begin with. Investment banks will group all currencies together as G10. So will retail brokers. And that's basically to divert your attention away from what really matters, which is volatility. They're trying to group them all as one basket, dependent just solely on the size of the transactions that occur every day in the Forex markets. The other definition uh, that we look at with investment banks, retail brokers, uh, is, in em is in emerging currencies. So we're talking about uh, countries here that whose economies are 
small and growing at a high rate or should be growing at a high rate and they're defined as emerging currencies. Emerging currencies typically within investment bank definitions, retail broker definitions, are split up into EMEA, so Europe, Middle East and Africa, uh, Gulf, so Gulf Cooperation Council, GCC, and also on the next page, Asia. And what you see here uh, is that we've marked up again a bunch of these currencies with a letter C because they're dependent very heavily on just one or two commodity prices. So the value of their currency depends very heavily on one or two commodities because it's a very big proportion of their exports. And over here on the right hand side, we've got the GCC and with the GCC currencies, all the Middle East currencies, you can see that they are all dependent on one or two commodities. And you can also see we've marked them up with a P. The P stands for pegged, and this is a Forex regime. We're going to look more closely at Forex regimes in video number two. But for now, we just need to know that there's two main Forex regimes. The first one is a floating regime where a country's currency has the ability to float freely against all other currencies in the world. And the second main regime is a fixed or pegged regime where the value of a currency is fixed or pegged to the value of another or to a basket of other currencies. Usually the basket is made up of the main trading partners of the country's export market. So we should know intuitively that in the Middle East, the commodity we're going to be looking at uh, is the oil price. So oil exports of the Middle East. But we also have to be aware that all of our Middle Eastern currencies are in some way pegged to another currency or a basket of currencies of their trading partners.